The dying of the flesh gets on the ground. It's when you don't care how wonderful you look. All you just began to sing is hallelujah, all of us see your tire cut. Because at that moment, Satan cannot understand the connection in the spirit. Can I tell somebody there's a place in God, in the inner court. I'm in Acts chapter number 12. This is the Acts of the Apostles. Now about that time, to understand that those four words, now about that time, you have to go to Acts chapter number 11 to understand what he means about that time. About that time is referring to the expansion of the church in Antioch. The church began to grow dramatically in Antioch. Uh, so much so that Barnabas was sent there to observe what was taking place in Antioch. Antioch is a port city. And there were many uh, ethnic groups, nationalities there that were fighting for economic prominence. And it broke, onto, broke out into ethnic battles some sort of xenophobic backlashes uh, for traders that weren't uh, indigenous to Antioch. And so what the uh, rulers, the governors of the city of Antioch, the uh, mayor, for example, town clerk, they built what is called gated communities and set a curfew in Antioch. And there were 18 different gated communities and so the curfew began from 6 in the evening to 6 the next morning. And it was mandatory that each national group, ethnic group, went into their particular ethnic grouping behind a gated community to curb the violence uh, that was hurting the city of Antioch. And it was at that time when Christianity hit the city of Antioch and brotherly love broke out in such a significant way that they began to call those that followed the way of Christ first at Antioch, we became known as Christians. And Barnabas was sent there to observe that move of God. It was so dynamic, he then sent for the Apostle Paul who came to Antioch as well to help administrate this magnificent move of God and it was there that all the walls, the gated communities, the walls came down, the curfew was lifted because there was such a major integration of individuals, nationalities, ethnic groupings, people groupings, economic groupings, and there was a significant amount of love shown. Now, chapter number 12 and verse 1. At that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex Certain of the church. He's not going to uh, vex the church. He knows if he can touch the leaders, he smite the shepherd, he scatter the sheep. And so his strategy then was he killed James, the brother of John. It was always Peter, James, and John. So he went for the threefold cord to break it. So he killed James. And when he saw it pleased the Jews, he arrested Peter intend him to kill him also. And uh, he arrested Peter, put him in prison, put him between four quarter neons of soldiers uh, that kept him, intending after Easter to kill him. Verse 5, which is something that Herod did not back on. Peter was kept in prison, but look at this. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. This prayer meeting was conducted in the house of Mary, the mother of James that was killed. She hosted a prayer meeting, brought everybody together for prayer because Peter was in jail. Okay? Verse 6, And when Herod would have brought him forth that night, 
Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. How in the world is a man going to sleep when he knows that the next day they're going to take his life? The simple reason is that Peter had a prophecy from Jesus that said, when you were an old man, people, somebody will lead you along the way. So Peter knew, I'm not dying tomorrow, so why should I panic? Just yeah, sleep. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't panic. Don't panic. Amen. And an angel came because the prayer meeting activated angelic activity. Daniel chapter number 9 and 10. The prayer moved angels. And the angel came and tapped Peter on his side and said, get up. Verse 7. Get up. Smote him on his side and told him to get up. He said, rise up quickly. Everyone say, rise up quickly. Now the process is you rise up, then the chains fall off. It's not chains fall off, then you rise up. The process is you rise up, then the chains fell off his hands. And then the angel told him to put on his shoes. In the Old Testament, you take off your shoes. In the New Testament, you put on your shoes. In the Old Testament, you take off your shoes because the gospel was not prepared. In the New Testament, we put on the shoes of the gospel that are prepared for us. We walk in those steps. Go with me to Acts chapter 12 and verse 33 for purposes of time. Uh, Herod sent for Peter. Peter was out of jail. The Bible says he came through all the doors past the iron gate. And then Herod went to Caesarea Philippi, a city that was built by a predecessor, Philip, who built the city of Caesarea Philippi where Jesus made a statement in, Acts chap in Matthew chapter number 16. At Caesarea Philippi, he said, Whom do men say that I am? Peter, Peter said, Thou art the Christ. So the same place, Peter made an acknowledgement that thou art the Christ, and that place where he was given the keys is the same place he was arrested, the same place the devil was trying to kill him. So at Caesarea Philippi, Herod gets up, and he speaks, and the people said, he speaks like a god. He made himself the illegitimate spokesperson when the legitimate spokesperson was Peter. The angel that set Peter free is the same angel in verse number 23. The angel of the Lord smote him. The same angel smote Peter. Chains fell off. The next morning, the angel smote him, and he died because he didn't give God the glory and worms ate him there. And like Dr. Sitima said earlier, verse 24, but the word of God grew and multiplied. Whatever enemy is raised up against you, the word of God will increase and multiply. It seems like the devil should have learned by now the more he unleashes persecution, the stronger and the greater the word of God becomes. Father, thank you for your blessing. In the name of Jesus, somebody say amen. amen. My subject tonight is a simple word, delivered, 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 delivered. Your life, the way it is right now, is a reflection of your inner self. Your outward life is a reflection of you. Uh, I adore Inoxitima for many reasons, but uh, the first time I came to minister in Botswana, I came here to the airport and he picked me up in a brand new gold E-Class Mercedes-Benz. And at that time, teacher and I were struggling. We didn't have a vehicle. He planted the seed in my spirit of possibilities. And I hadn't seen him in years. Now, I mean, you look at him, he's still got all his hair. Look at me, Amen. The difference is Mugabe, look what he did to me. <laughs> I'm wearing glasses, he doesn't wear glasses, amen. Look at his shoes, look at mine, amen. Uh, but again, again, the guys that met me at the airport today were, were together. Uh, and I don't know why he came to the airport, you know, because he's busy, but he came in his usual way, dressed in the same way, driving in a classy way. And when you look at a person, you can tell exactly what is happening in their inner self. My mother told us when we were kids, told the girls, one day you are going to have a man that wants to marry you. She said, the way you judge a man is by his shoes. 
Don't trust a man who can't clean his shoes. Look at all the men looking at their shoes. So is your wardrobe, your car, your kitchen, your teeth is a reflection of what's happening inside. If you are having struggles physically, it's generally an internal battle. Unforgiveness, bitterness, hate, uh, jealousy, and so on and so forth. If you fix the man inside, it fixes the world outside. When a person announces out of the blue that they want, for example, a divorce, and I'm not getting into that today, the divorce didn't happen that morning. It was happening over two, three, four, five years. There was an internal issue that was not dealt with. It's a root that began to grow. Now to uproot that is a challenge. Number two, number two, your knowledge is a reflection of who you are. You are what you do not know. Because if you knew what you do not know, you wouldn't be what you are. My people perish for lack of knowledge. We are what we do not know. In the words of Julius Malema, I didn't know. If you knew what you didn't know, you, uh, you will have moved dramatically forward. So our quest then must be the quest for knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Now once knowledge has been given, we then have to be given the steps as to how to apply that knowledge that's been given. And so you can go to university and you can study the fundamentals of a discipline and receive the knowledge and even a certificate to prove that you've been there for four and a half years, seven years, or whatever the case might be. But now, once you leave class with a certificate, now it's the application of that knowledge that determines your success or failure. Everyone that goes to Bible school is taught by the same lecturer. But why is it that some people do not have the same kind of success? We won't deal with issues of the grace of God and the gift of God and all of those. We'll just put it in a broad brush sense. It's the application. The application. I'm the oldest of ten kids. Why is it that I'm in a certain place and the others may not be? It's because of application. Some people are just doers while others are just hearers. Be ye therefore doers of the word and not hearers only. So once knowledge is given to you, you then have to apply it. I jumped in the shower today. Thank God. And uh, there was soap. Yes, there was water. There was soap. I was in the shower. Yes, I was in the shower. But what... What uh, would the difference have been I'm standing in the shower if I hadn't turned on the tap and hadn't applied the soap? You have to apply it. <laughs> so knowledge that's not applied is worse than having knowledge. Turn to your neighbor say, apply the knowledge. <laughs> apply the knowledge. Jesus said to a generation, he said, it's worse for you, Sidon and Tyre. Because if Sodom and Gomorrah had the knowledge that you have, they would not have gone through what they went through. So it's going to be worse for you because you have knowledge. Number three, number, number three, you are a reflection of your wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to interpret knowledge and apply it. It is mandatory, pray for wisdom, James 1.5. If you lack it, ask God that gives to all men. Pray for wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. You ask for wisdom for every kind of situation. There is technical, intellectual wisdom, which is the kind of wisdom that Solomon applied in the way he ran his administration. But then there is streetwise wisdom. 
And people that are in the church, that are shielded in the church, that they've never grown in the street, they don't know how to will and deal and make a living. You know, they have all, all, they've got all these papers, you know, uh, doctor of uh, economic affairs, and they become a minister of something, and whatever, whatever. But they've never been in the street. They've never been able to, to sell onions for Matlimbi. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Amen. People that can trade, can trade, that buy and sell and work and do. Because street wisdom, alongside with intellectual wisdom, goes a long way. Number two, in terms of a table, we must now look at what I call the laws of the universe. The laws of the universe are no respecter of persons. If there is a law that is applicable for people in Botswana, it's also applicable in Buenos Aires, it's applicable in Kiev, it's applicable in London. These are universal laws. If you give, it shall be given. If you don't give, you don't get. These are universal laws. Universal laws. And then there are laws that are laws that are applicable to time and place or environment. I'll use a simple one. Uh, Chich and I were in Paris a few weeks ago. And in Paris, they drive on the right side of the road. A few days before that, we were in London. In London, they drive on the left side of the road. Now, if the people from London go to Paris, they have to comply with the laws and the rules of traffic in Paris. They can't say, we are British. We drive on the left. So here we are driving on the left. No. Every world has its own rules and regulations and its laws. And when you come into that world, you must comply with those. So you coming now, you are impressed with, uh, you know, uh, Bible life, the 30th anniversary. You are so impressed and you are coming from some place in Serue. And uh, you went to see uh, the main man there by the Koshla there. And uh, you're moving here because you got a government job. And you're looking for a church and you heard that there was this... Uh, uh, a very uh, handsome, cheeky husband man from Zimbabwe that you were coming to check out, and you liked the praise, the music, amen, you enjoyed the interview, and you've decided from Serue, this is going to be your church. Now, when you make a move to this church, you have to comply with the rules and the regulations of this church. You can't say, we did this in Serue. Are you crazy? You were Serue. This is not Serue. This is not Jerusalem. Because this world has its laws, it has its regulations, whatever they are. And so we comply with that. This is individual environmental laws. You, when you come into Caesar's world, you render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. If you are in a universal world, those laws apply. But when you come into an individual world, you comply with that. So I'm here to celebrate with Dr. Satima uh, 30 years of ministry. My preaching is not going to be governmental. It's not going to be changing the culture. It's not going to be an infusion of doctrine. There will not be the hint of dealing with issues that may uh, emerge on social media platforms that are being discussed throughout Africa. Our responsibility here is to edify and to build and to encourage. Now, if I'm invited in a role to address a particular, particular governmental issue, I'm talking about church government, or a particular theological issue, we will then come in on that platform to deal with that. And so, there is no need, he's not going to worry because he knows the kind of ministry I do. It would be highly irresponsible for me to get up here and start teaching certain things that can create controversy or controversy in this church. That he has to come here on Sunday and start cleaning up what Bismarck did. 
So I then studied this world. When Doc asked me to come, I studied it. I asked some questions to understand the world I'm coming in and the evolution of the church so that it truly is a 30th anniversary. Even me as a guest speaker, with all of the many accolades that Dr. Sitima was throwing on me, I thought, don't make the advertisement better than the movie. <laughs> the next thing is laws, then they are systems. Systems. Anytime you have a move of the Holy Spirit, it's always put in a system. So Genesis 1, God creates a thing, he puts it in a system. He creates a thing, he puts it in a system. And the reason Christianity and churches don't do too well in Africa is because we do not have adequate systems. A system, here yeah, is a quick definition, systems are an interconnected series of persons places, things, events that are self-sustaining, self-perpetuating, organized to produce certain or given outcomes. Systems are a set of things that work together. Let there be light. Boom! 186,000 miles a second travels in straight nine, lines bent by a prism that produces the rainbow colors. Let there be that sound, 750 miles an hour at sea level, 743 miles an hour at 10,000 feet and above. That's sound. So you can't use a system of electricity and apply it to sound because one will overrule the other. You have to have systems, a system for leadership, a system for finance, a system for the way you manage your clothes, People that don't have systems in their house, when it's time for registering, uh, uh, you're licensing your car, now you start looking for the registration book. Where's the registration book? Honey, you had it last. No, I gave it to you. Remember we were there. You don't have a system for your electricity bills, a system for the water bills. You don't have receipts for the things you... For me... Everything I purchase, I have a receipt. Now with the phone, it's easier. I just click it, it goes onto my phone. If you do not have systems, you will live in chaos in your life. And you'll get to a place where God cannot trust you. Because you will not be responsible in working within a system. Let me give you the biblical example leading to my scripture. Stay with me. I told you it's going to be rudimental in the beginning. In Acts chapter number 6, a few girls started complaining. We are not being addressed. We are not being fed. And so the apostles then, there was a temptation to start serving the Grecian widows and giving them food. But that would have taken away and added outside of the apostolic system. Now there's a need, but we are not meeting that need. He said, choose you and let's create a system. So they found seven Grecian men, highly intellectual, highly skilled, men of faith, strong Christians, miracle workers. There was no name for them. Later on, Paul calls them deacons. But they created a system and gave it a name after it existed. Chapter number 6 and verse 4, the apostle said, we must be given to the word and to prayer. That's our system, the word and to prayer. And so in the 21st century, we have a version of apostolic ministry. Stay with me. Where you don't have apostles that are being given to the word and to prayer in terms of what Jesus would expect. And so when we're dealing with this particular approach to longevity and long-lasting ministry, we are now looking at succession. What does it mean for the man or the woman that comes behind us? It took 30 years to get here and build this with much sacrifice. First time I came, this building was on foundation level. I almost fell into a ingot here, a hole in the middle of the night. I said, Enoch, what are you trying to do, Amen? You're trying to assassinate me here. You were in a tent. Which side was the tent? Something. It was this side here. Amen. And we preached a storm in that place. And then in the middle of the night, 
He, he, like Nicodemus, he brought me here to see holes. I thought, why can't we come tomorrow? It's like holes everywhere. Herod then said, the way I'm going to endear these people to me, I'll give them what they don't have, a temple. So in John chapter number 2, the Bible says when Jesus said, I'll destroy this body in three days, I'll raise it up. The Jews said to, me, said to him, we are Tanya Wena. This temple that we're looking at took 46 years to build. So this Herod didn't spare the cost. The Bible says in 24 of Matthew verse 1, the disciples said to Jesus, what a great temple we have. Jesus said there won't be one stone upon another. That temple was so elaborate, it even had 24 karat gold going between the, the, the bricks and, and uh, the stones. It was extremely elaborate. It was back then one of the seven wonders of the world. Herod did not spare 46 years to build that temple. And the Jews became endeared to Herod. The next Herod is Herod the Great. This is the Herod that Jesus finds when he's born. This Herod is killing babies. The kings came to Herod and said, we know there's a king born. And so he says, when you find him, tell me so I can worship him. Because he wanted to kill Jesus. And he went to Bethlehem, killed all the boys two years and under. And the angel had told Joseph, take the baby to Egypt. Now, this Herod was very evil. His sons, three of them, were talking about who will take over after dad. He killed them publicly at a steak dinner. Lined them up and they thought he was going to name a successor. And right there, he killed them. He drowned his brother-in-law, Aristoteles, at a similar steak dinner. Because his brother challenged his action publicly and said, how could you do that? And so in, in a massive uh, punch dish, he put Aristotle's head in the punch dish and drowned him there. Looking at other leaders to dare them to defy him. His wife, Mary Ann, uh, whom he loved dearly, challenged him on killing her brother. And so at a state dinner, he strangled her. And as he was strangling her, he was saying, I love you. This Herod was so evil, sisters and brothers, that he knew the day he dies, people will be celebrating in the streets. And so he got his generals and captains on his, of his army to sign their name in blood and promise them land and property that when he dies, they must kill firstborns throughout Israel. So that even though they will not be mourning for him, they will be mourning in Israel. Then there is Herod the Tetrarch. This is the Herod who killed John the Baptist. Jesus called him the fox. Then there's Herod Agrippa that Paul preached to. Then there is Herodias the sister that was the wife of Philip who built Caesarea Philippi. Stay with me, I'm almost there. Then there is Bernice, the sister of Herod Agrippa, Acts 25 verse 13. Very beautiful woman. Bernice was so beautiful that she'd have a servant uh, hold a, a, a saucepan with water to see her reflection. And she would say, this reflection is not doing justice to my beauty. Disturb the water. And then lastly, there is Drusilla. She was married to Felix that Paul preached to and made him tremble. Acts 24 and verse 24. So my point around this generational evil, you are dealing with a mad lot, an evil lot. Individuals that will do anything to get ahead. They'll betray you, they'll take your life, they'll kill your children, they'll stab you, they'll destroy your business, they'll malign your name. It's generational evil. The last Herod, which is not the last one, is the Herod of our subject, is Herod the Terrible. This Herod introduced persecution in the church. His popularity was waning because the church was growing. More people were now coming out to church meetings. Antioch was beginning to see the power of God. And anytime you have a people that agree that God is able to do some great things and people get together, limitations are lifted off their life. And so, for Bible life, the days for greater unity 
are now. I know you've been together for a long time. Some may have been here from the beginning of the journey. But now we have crossed certain thresholds. Time for us to deal with generational evil and build for the future. Can I preach like I feel it now? Oh, sisters and brothers, it takes a very long time to cross a certain threshold. I was disappointed at the answer you gave your interviewer. It was too simple for me. But I know your journey and those know your modesty. Uh, but if he told you the real story of days of lack and pain and suffering, betrayal and disappointment, backstabbing and uh, all kinds of political agendas, social agendas, economic agendas, organized economic groups to sabotage this building. Oh yes, they didn't tell the story, but to God be the glory. We came to tell the devil and his mother-in-law everything we have here we've earned it by the grace of god thank god for his grace and by his grace we will go forward thank god for faith because faith has built this without faith it is impossible to please god so when you walk in here and you feel the air conditioner don't feel entitled when you see the carpet don't feel entitled don't get angry if you don't have a parking space because 30 years ago your family was walking to get here don't feel entitled this family paid a price to fight devils in the street fight devils at midnight fight devils in the morning fight devils for your family fight devils from generations fight poverty fight blood altars fight fight covenants it's taken a long time to get here but as the church starts moving into revival suddenly a herod will appear an assassin herod will try to kill james the devil is a liar can i preach like i feel this thing i have about five more minutes uh, herod i came to tell you uh, the herods before you god took care of them and you are standing here at caesarea philippi and you're killing james but it's at caesarea philippi where jesus said upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and peter i give to you the keys to the kingdom of heaven not keys to the jailhouse not keys to the city not keys to the nation but the keys to the kingdom of heaven what you bind is bound what you lose is loosed i declare 30 years of greater things 30 years of open heaven 30 years of miracle signs and wonders i declare millionaires in this church i declare women that are business owners property owners you're going to travel to countries you didn't even know with that mercedes benzes and bmws range rovers double stories armani suits versace suits are coming everywhere we taking care of herod so herod if you kill james you're gonna make me more angry i'm gonna organize prayer if you ever heard me pray i'm gonna pray more i'm gonna pray harder i'm going to give more i'm gonna serve harder i'm gonna worship stronger i'm gonna shout louder i'm gonna clap my hands i'm gonna praise him like i've never praised him look what the lord has done 
Give someone a high five. Say deliver it. God is able to deliver. If he did it for my mother, he'll do it for you. Shout preach, Bishop. Shout preach, Bishop. I'm trying to preach to you. Lift up your heads. Know that good days are coming. Good days are coming. Botswana, it's a new day now. Good days are coming. Botswana, it's a new day now. The night is ended. A new day is coming. The famine is over. The drought is ended. Money is coming like storms. Businesses are coming from everywhere. God's raising up your children. Give me a break. Look at your sports team. Botswana sports team are making headlines around the world. It's a sign that this country is starting to run and this country is starting to jump. The devil can go to hell. Herod, if you kill James, I'm not going to panic. I'll just sleep in jail. Give someone a high five. Say sleep and rest in the Lord. Stand still. You'll see the salvation of the Lord. These chains don't bother me. I'm a cat. Don't bother me. Ah, those soldiers, those police, don't bother me. They've got the keys to the jail, but I got keys to the kingdom of heaven. Keys to end poverty. Keys to end prosperity, to end ignorance. Tell someone I got the keys. I got the keys. I got the keys for the future. I got the keys for happiness. I'm closing now. I have 35 seconds. I am delivered. I'm coming out of jail. The chains are falling off. I'm putting on my shoes. I'm climbing to a higher level. I'm a millionaire. Put on your shoes. Put on your shoes. Walk as a millionaire. Put on your shoes. Walk as a property owner. Put on your shoes. Walk as a globe trotter. Put on your shoes. Go to Nigeria. Put on your shoes. Go to Jerusalem. Put on your shoes. Go and have tea with Megan and Harry. Put on your shoes. You're going to another level. Tell your neighbor. Put on your shoes. Yesterday was yesterday. It's a new day today. I'm delivered. I'm delivered. Delivered from fear. I'm delivered. Delivered from limitation. I'm delivered. Delivered from lack of knowledge. I'm delivered. Delivered from confusion. I'm delivered. Delivered from break in my spirit. I said I'm delivered to go to the next level. I'm going higher. Pray for me as I go higher. I'll pray for you as you go higher. Oh yes. Oh yes. Bible life. Clap your hands for a new day. A better day. A blessed day. A breakthrough day. A miracle day. A power day. It's time to give him a prayer. Yeah. But God, I feel like running. I feel like running. I feel like rejoicing. The chains are falling. I'm delivered. Good days are here. Bless. Blessing is here. Yokes are falling. Anointing is coming. Put your hand on your head. Shout delivered. 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 I'm 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 delivered. Put your hand on someone. Say delivered. 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 
delivered. Hear it! I'm delivered. I said I'm delivered. Prayer is pushing back the word of God. The word of God. The word of God will keep on growing. Herod, you're about to die. We are ending generational evil. We're going to bury Herod and raise up the word. Give him a praise. God says yes! God says yes! Go for it! God says yes! Climb higher! God says yes! Take it! God says yes! It's yours! God says yes! Possess it! The violent! Take it by force! generation that God raises up to end generational evil. This is that.